Oh, I didn't notice you here. As you might know, AMD just had their Computex presentation and the, okay, I can't keep doing this voice. What's going on guys, Snow's here for Hardware Canucks and AMD just rapid fired us with a bunch of new stuff that we need to unpack here. We got Smart Storage, Mendocino, Zen 4, X670, B650, just a bunch of stuff. So let's get into it right after a message from our sponsors. I am so jealous of all who have access to Micro Center. Are you kidding me? They have everything to get you in the mood. Laptops for days for Eber, in stock hardware components. I mean, wow. And all types of gaming goodies for you know who. People call it tech heaven, but you don't gotta die to visit one. Go on a Thursday, for example. Prices are always competitive, and I'm told they have over 30,000 items in stock, and I call that confidence. You customers get a free SSD growing some market share I see. Check out Micro Center down below. I'm gonna skip over the first half since all they talked about was how their mobile Ryzen 6000 chips and notebooks are super impressive, best in class, and yada, yada, yada. Honestly, I think they're great. The team is working on some incredible reviews, so stay tuned for that. But the only hiccup is that they're just really hard to find. Anyways, fast forward and stop. Here it is, codename Mendocino. Now, this might be a game changer. This new lineup of laptops is for the everyday person, not aimed at gaming, not aimed at high compute performance, just a laptop that you would buy for your kid that needs to do some homework or for someone who really just uses their laptop for everyday tasks. It's a quad core, a thread chip based on the Zen 2 architecture and it has RDNA 2 graphics, kind of like the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, we don't know how many graphics compute units that this thing has yet, but I doubt that it will have very many. It's not a workhorse chip. AMD did mention that the uh, graphics in Mendocino support all of the same features as Ryzen 6000. So you get the same encoder and decoder, which includes AV1 decode, nice. You apparently get the same battery life efficiency as Ryzen 6000, and all of that at the 399 to 699 price point. A price point which at the low end had little to no quality offerings. You were better off just getting a nice high quality tablet instead. Now, I said a couple of seconds ago that I doubt that it will have very many compute units when it comes to uh, RDNA 2 graphics, and I stand by that. But the Steam Deck doesn't have very many either, and it runs games at a pretty low resolution, but it runs a lot of them like a champ. So maybe with some FSR 2.0 magic, a little decrease of the resolution, and a high enough compute unit count, we could see an accessible, affordable gaming machine here. I guess we'll have to wait until Q4 to find out, and trust me, I expect to find out. And now let's get into the meat and potatoes. Now that AM4 has received its last meal, we have Zen 4 and the AM5 platform. Zen 4 has twice the L2 cache per core, a single thread uplift of over 15%, core clocks that are expected to go well above 5 GHz, and it has an expanded instruction set. So let's break it down. First, the single thread uplift. It's pretty self-explanatory. All I can add here is that the test was done on Cinebench R23. Then the expanded instruction set for AI acceleration. Well, if you're interested about that, this is a lot like what Intel is doing with their deep learning boosts on Alder Lake. It's an instruction set that uh, accelerates AI workloads. Okay, next, a whopping five gigahertz plus max boost. Dr. Lisa Su actually went ahead and showed off this insane clock speed during the stream. It actually went over 5.5 gigahertz. That's crazy, especially considering AMD is showing this off in a gaming scenario, meaning that the other cores are probably not far off that frequency. With the improvements on Zen 3 for clock speed distribution across the cores, I wouldn't be surprised if the all core boost was at or over five gigahertz, seriously. Kudos here, AMD. And this coupled with the two times L2 cache per core, that CPU is going to stay fed with information. Which, speaking of that, more cache is great. L2, even better. But the frequency is what can take advantage of that. And it looks like AMD finally figured out how to engineer this. Intel kind of went the complete opposite way with super high clock speeds for a long time and low cache, and they're just now increasing their cache. I mean, Raptor Lake is rumored to have up to 68 megabytes of cache in total. So yeah, not bad. What else? Well, we're looking at models up to 16 cores, and the motherboards will support up to a 170 watt 
watt TDP for the CPU. For those of you who thought that you could keep your DDR4 memory for the next generation, bad news. AM5 is a DDR5 only platform, but you'll still be able to use your current AM4 coolers, so at least there's that. If we look at the first generation on the AM5 platform, we're looking at up to 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes for storage and graphics, up to, is important here, but we'll get back to it in a moment, up to 14 USB 3 ports, with some getting the USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 treatment. God, I hate this naming scheme. That's up to 20 gigabits per second. You also get Wi-Fi 6E support, up to 4 HDMI 2.1 and Display 2 ports. Which brings me to the I.O. chiplet. This little puppy has brand new RDNA 2 graphics built in, which means that you don't necessarily need a GPU to get your computer to post while you wait for your next gen graphics card. Neat. Lastly, let's talk motherboards. So AMD revealed three new chipsets, X670E or Extreme, X670 and B650. Let's start with the highest end, X670 Extreme. You get PCIe Gen 5 everywhere. At least that's what AMD tells you. It's sort of that. It will have two PCIe slot and one NVMe slot at PCIe Gen 5 speeds, but the rest is Gen 4. It also has the most premium chipset, so extreme overclockers are going to want this model. Then there's X670, still overclockable, but on the PCIe front, this one is a little tricky. The motherboard manufacturer has to have PCIe Gen 5 on the storage slot, but for the graphics slot, it's optional. And lastly, there's B650. Like X670, it has to have PCIe Gen 5 on the storage slot, but the graphics slot will always be at Gen 4. It is interesting to note that they did not mention overclocking here though. I hope that they don't lock us out like Intel does. That's a dangerous path to follow here, AMD. By the way, the reason why there's such a focus on storage for PCIe Gen 5 is simply because, well, we're there. We're at the limit of Gen 4 speeds on four lanes, and it's time to move up. The Fizon controller is expected to be 60% faster in read speeds compared to Gen 4. That's very impressive. AM5 and Ryzen 7000, by the way, should be available in fall. So yeah, that was a lot. It's going to be interesting to see how both Intel and AMD compare in the next generation, especially when it comes to price. AMD going all in for DDR5 makes the price of entry a little bit higher now. At least Intel and AMD will be on somewhat of a level playing field. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. In any case, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about this event, this incredible event. As usual, right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to Hardware Connects, right here to subscribe to Boot Sequence, that's new. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, I host this fully, so if you want to see more of uh, this uh, disgusting mug, it's right here. Take care.